Hmm. 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 Ha! You're scared of moving that one piece, aren't you? You aren't brave at all! Does anyone else have those time capsules of memories from way back in the day with a certain feeling attached to them? Like that one time I spilled a whole glass of water at a restaurant. In front of everyone. Oh goodness, how I wish the floor would have just opened up and swallowed me completely. <laughs> Anyways. There are a couple of these memories I have where, thinking back on it, were quite normal, silly things. However, the feelings attached to them are no less than feelings of courage and bravery. Like I single-handedly defended a group of helpless children against a fire-breathing dragon. I guess my knowledge back then was so limited on what was counted as brave, or my experiences were so few that I considered these top-tier bravery. But yeah, the memories are just going on a swing and trying to kill a bee. <laughs> okay. But let me elaborate, or else this video is going to be shorter than my watch time. Yeah, Popper, your watch time is so short, you want to try to get monetized? Don't make me laugh! Before I discuss this first memory, I've got to give you some backstory. <coughs> Long before time had a name, probably when I was like seven or eight maybe, we had this cool swing set up in our backyard. We had a little castle play structure set up next to the swing so that we could climb on top of it, grab the swing, and jump off, giving us an immediate boost for our swing ride. It was great! In the cheerful summer days, my siblings, neighbor friends, and I would line up next to the castle for hours, getting turns at swinging off like it was the brand new, overly hyped ride at an amusement park. Whee! Whoa, goodness me! This. However fun it may be, was not all we had for entertainment in the backyard. We had one more swing setup that outweighed this one by a long shot. Like a tricycle compared to a motorcycle. A one-story house compared to a skyscraper. A bookshelf compared to a library. A bowl of vanilla ice cream compared to a waffle cone, three scoops of chocolate, peppermint, and strawberry ice cream with chocolate sauce, caramel sauce, extra sprinkles, and a single bright red cherry on the very top. Hey! Vanilla ice cream is the best flavor! What I'm trying to say is that we had a place to jump off of the swing that was way higher than the castle setup. Let me paint the scene. The castle setup is here. The tree is here. The tree branch is here, with the swing tied onto it mm, about here. Around the tree, we had a really awesome fort with a roof that we could climb on. If you stood on the very edge of the fort right here, you could just get the swing up so that you could sit on it and then hop off and come racing over the side like an eagle swooping down on its prey. My brother had a very intelligent, fitting name for this monstrosity of a swing. He called it the Monster Swing. And that is literally what it was, a monstrous swing from quite high up that looked like tons of fun, but intimidated little seven-year-old me so much. All of the older kids had no problem doing it, and everyone said it was a blast, and no one got hurt, but for some reason I couldn't get myself to hop off into the ride of my life. That is until one fateful day. The day I slew the monster swing like it was a real life monster. The day I conquered all my fears and became the bravest seven-year-old the world had ever known. Or at least so I thought then. It was a peaceful sunny day, my siblings and I were playing in our backyard and my older brother managed to coax me up to the very top of the fort until I was standing on the edge, the swing in my hands, knees knocking, ready to make an attempt to try the monster swing. I'd been up here multiple times before, but had never managed to get the courage to actually follow through. But this time, I promised myself, would be different. They didn't know the limits I would go to prove my bravery, my courage, 
and my sheer will to look danger straight in the face and spit on it. My brother counted to three. I don't think either of us thought that I would actually jump, but he did it anyway. And on three, I closed the side of my brain that was jumping up and down, screaming for me not to do it. Instead, I let the risky side take over, the daring, courageous side. And I jumped off. A blast of air caught me as I careened through all of space and time, in the course of those heart-stopping, mind-numbing, nail-biting seconds, I was the happiest kid on planet Earth. I enjoyed the rest of the ride, narrowly avoiding the very large and unyielding trunk of the tree, and landed safe and sound. After that, I only did it a couple more times, because each time it still freaked me out just a tiny bit. That fort was actually pretty high for someone as small as I was, so I actually would give my little self a gold star for being able to jump off of it. Good job, little me. Speaking of the fort, my second bout of bold, brash bravery was inside of it, and I was all by myself. My siblings and I had been enjoying a peaceful summer morning in the fort, playing games and doing whatever else little kids do. I can't remember who saw it, but suddenly shouts of alarm rang out about a wasp in the top corner of the building, near the door. We all fled for our lives and didn't re-enter the fort for quite some time. I don't know what I was thinking when I did this, but for some reason, for a few hours, I cooked up the idea of me being the hero who saved the fort from the wasp, imagining myself killing it and running back to my siblings to tell them my brave tale. Then we'd all celebrate and run back into the fort to keep playing. So, with this stuck in my mind, I crept back to the fort and picked up a large stick we had lying around. Hefting it in my hands, I snuck inside and pulled up a plastic chair to stand on so I could get up close to find the wasp. My heart was beating fast, and I could remember being absolutely terrified that the wasp was going to leap out from wherever it was hiding and sting me but no wasp could be seen. I poked around with the stick, hoping for it to crawl into sight, but I'm pretty sure it had just flown away or crawled into a different corner. My heart still racing from the nerve-wracking search, I hopped off my chair and tossed the stick to the side. I think I just walked back to my brother and just said, I think it's gone. Alas, no shouts of how brave I was, no celebrating of the slaying of the wasp, but at least we got to keep playing in the fort. So that was nice. And there we go. Happy ending. Thank you for watching the video. The support means a lot. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and share the channel with some friends. We are so close to hitting 2000 subscribers, which is a huge leap toward the goal of 5K by the end of the year. Thanks again to those who have been sending in fan art. It's so awesome and I appreciate every single one. If you would like to send in fan art, you can do so by emailing it to the address in the description. Have a wonderful day, and stay creative.